the name of the chapter is from hunting gathering to growing food ancient history is categorized into three periods paleolithic mesolithic and neolithic let us look at them one by one paleolithic period earliest period is known as paleolithic it comes from two greek words paleo means old and lithos means stone the name points to the importance of stone tools this period extends from 2 million years ago to about 12000 years ago this stretch of time is divided into lower middle and upper paleolithic period this long span of time covers 99% of human history the next period is mesolithic period the period when we find environmental changes beginning about 12000 years ago till about 10000 years ago is called the mesolithic period stone tools found during this time are generally tiny and are called microliths microliths were probably stuck onto handles of bone or wood to make tools such as saws and sickles and lastly neolithic period the next stage from about 10000 years ago is known as the neolithic now hunter gatherers are a part of paleolithic period so we study about hunter gatherers and their lifestyle tools used by hunter gatherers and habitat description of hunter gatherers hunter gatherers and their lifestyle people who lived in the subcontinent as early as 2 million years ago are described to be hunter gatherers we came to know about hunter gatherers from archaeologists that is they have found some of the things hunter gatherers made and used it is likely that people made and used tools of stone wood and bone of which stone tools have survived best the name comes from the way they used to get their food generally they hunted wild animals caught fish and birds gathered fruits roots nuts seeds leaves stalks and eggs hunter gatherers moved from place to place there are primarily four reasons behind this which are as follows first in search of food second in order to follow the movements of animals for the purpose of hunting third in search of different kind of seasonal plants and lastly in search of water our next sub topic is tools used by hunter gatherers it is likely that hunter gatherers made and used tools of stone wood and bones of which stone tools have survived best some of the uses of stone tools are as follows first used to cut meat and bone second scrape bark from trees and hides and third chop fruits and roots some stone tools may have been attached to handles of bone or wood to make spears and arrows for hunting other tools were used to chop wood which was used as firewood wood was also used to make huts and tools the next sub topic is habitat description of hunter gatherers places such as bhimbetka hansgi and karnool caves are sites from which archaeologists have found evidence of hunter gatherers most of the sites were located near sources of water such as rivers and lakes for example bhimbetka in present day madhya pradesh this is an old site with caves and rock shelters people chose these natural caves because they provided shelter from the rain heat and wind these rock shelters are close to the narmada valley many of the caves in which these early people lived have paintings on the walls these paintings show wild animals drawn with great accuracy and skill in karnool caves traces of ash have been found here 
this suggests that people were familiar with the use of fire fire could have been used for many things as a source of light to roast meat and to scare away animals so this is all about hunter gatherers from paleolithic period next we talk about mesolithic period in mesolithic period we study about transition from hunting gathering to farming and herding and domestication in mesolithic period transition from hunting gathering to farming and herding around 12000 years ago there were major changes in the climate of the world with a shift to relatively warm conditions in many areas this led to the development of grasslands this in turn led to an increase in the number of deer antelope goat sheep and cattle that is animals that survived on grass those who hunted these animals now followed them learning about their food habits and their breeding seasons it is likely that this helped people to start thinking about herding and rearing these animals themselves fishing also became important this was also a time when several grain bearing grasses including wheat barley and rice grew naturally in different parts of the subcontinent men women and children probably collected these grains as food and learned where they grew and when they ripened this may have led them to think about growing plants on their own in this way people became farmers people could also attract and then tame animals by leaving food for them near their shelters the first animal to be tamed was the wild ancestor of the dog later people encouraged animals that were relatively gentle to come near the camps where they lived these animals such as sheep goat cattle and also the pig lived in herds and most of them ate grass often people protected these animals from attacks by other wild animals this is how they became herders when people began growing plants it meant that they had to stay in the same place for a long time looking after the plants watering weeding driving away animals and birds till the grain ripened and then the grain had to be used carefully as grain had to be stored for both food and seed people had to think of ways of storing it in many areas they began making large clay pots or wove baskets or dug pits into the ground domestication in mesolithic period domestication is the name given to the process in which people grow plants and look after animals for domestication people select those plants and animals that are not prone to disease they also select plants that yield large size grain and have strong stalks capable of bearing the weight of the ripe grain seeds from selected plants are preserved and sown to ensure that new plants and seeds will have the same qualities amongst animals those that are relatively gentle are selected for breeding as a result gradually domesticated animals and plants become different from wild animals and plants hence domestication was a gradual process that took place in many parts of the world it began about 12000 years ago virtually all the plant and animal produce that we use as food today is a result of domestication some of the earliest plants to be domesticated were wheat and barley the earliest domesticated animals include sheep and goat by the end of the mesolithic period people started having a settled life hence in neolithic period we will talk about neolithic period sites and archaeological evidence and in detail study of mehergarh neolithic site neolithic period sites and archaeological evidence some of the neolithic period sites are burza home mehergarh chirand daujeli heading koldewa 
महागड़ा हलूर पेयापल्ली दीज आर सम ऑफ द साइट्स फ्रॉम वे आर्कोलॉजिस्ट हैव फाउंड एविडेंस ऑफ अर्ली फार्मर्स एंड हर्डर्स सम ऑफ द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट वंस आर इन द नॉर्थ वेस्ट इन प्रेजेंट डे कश्मीर एंड इन ईस्ट एंड साउथ इंडिया दे स्टडी एविडेंस ऑफ प्लांट्स एंड एनिमल बोन्स वन ऑफ द मोस्ट एक्साइटिंग फाइंड्स इंक्लूड्स रिमेनिंग ऑफ बर्न ग्रेन दीज मे हैव बीन बर्न एक्सीडेंटली और ऑन पर्पज they also identify the bones of different animals towards a settled life archaeologists have found traces of huts or houses at some sites for instance in burza home in present day kashmir people built pit houses which were dug into the ground with steps leading into them archaeologists have also found cooking huts both inside and outside the huts which suggests that depending on the weather people could cook food either indoors or outdoors stone tools have been found from many sites as well many of these are different from the earlier paleolithic tools and that is why they are called neolithic these include tools that were polished to give a fine cutting edge and mortars and pestles used for grinding grain and other plant produce Many kinds of earthen pots have also been found. These were sometimes decorated and were used for storing things. People began using pots for cooking food, especially grains like rice, wheat and lentils that now became an important part of the diet. Besides, they began weaving cloth using different kinds of materials. For example, cotton that could now be grown in detail study of mehergarh neolithic site mehergarh site is located in a fertile plain near the bulan pass which is one of the most important routes into iran mehergarh was probably one of the places where people learned to grow barley and wheat and rear sheep and goats for the first time in this area it is one of the earliest villages that we know about at this site many animal bones were found bones of wild animals such as the deer and pig and also bones of sheep and goat were found other finds at mehergarh include remains of square or rectangular houses each house had four or more compartments some of which may have been used for storage when people die their relatives and friends generally pay respect to them people look after them perhaps in the belief that there is some form of life after death burial is one such arrangement several burial sites have been found at mehergarh in one instance the dead person was buried with goats which were probably meant to serve as food in the next world thank you everyone